What is happening troops, welcome back to another video on the Sharp Div YouTube channel and in this video today I will be going through some of the signings that Rangers have already made. In total, it looks like we have made 7 signings at the time of recording this video. Hopefully, Kent will be coming soon. Please announce Kent. So we're basically just going to go through them. I'm going to give my thoughts, hopefully you can get involved in the comment section below and give your thoughts and we can just have a wee discussion regarding some of the transfers we have made so far. Before we do continue, I was on the BazCast 3000 last night, which is a podcast ran by Baz. Yep, you wouldn't believe it. Without a doubt, it was the funniest shoot I have ever been involved in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link for that in the description. And after this video, if you want to go check it out, then please do so. It's a good laugh. There's a quiz between me and CJ, there's hot sauce, there's talks, and yeah, it's just generally pretty, pretty decent. The first signing that I'm going to be speaking about is Jake Hasty. Jake Hasty is 21 years old. We signed him on a free transfer from Motherwell. Obviously, we did have to pay some developmental compensation to Motherwell as we got him on the free. Jake scored six Motherwell goals last year in the league, and these goals actually came in the span of about six months, as that's when he broke into the team. Gogsy, who is a Motherwell fan, actually did speak about him a little bit and warned me that he was quite a good player. So when he broke into the first team, it wasn't as much of a surprise that he was doing well. He was scoring goals, he was creating chances, and he was just kind of lighting up the league for a wee bit. There was this buzz going around Hasty, and I'm actually just very, very glad that Rangers managed to put pen to paper and get his services all the way to Ibrox. But there was a lot of talk of us actually just loaning him straight back out. But due to the way that he has performed away at the training camp, if you've been watching Rangers TV, there has been some really, really good clips of him with just his finishing and his crossing. And if he takes like, a duck to water for Rangers there is a chance he could potentially get into that fold because we're not talking about an emerging young player. Yes, he is a young player, but if you're looking at guys like Glenn Middleton, 18 years old, coming into the fold, he is 21 years old. So he's hitting an age where he will be wanting to play first-team football. He won't be wanting to go out on loan and be a bit back player. He's come to Rangers, I believe, to start. And if he gets his chance, it's up to him to take it. So let me know in the comment section below how you rate this transfer. Let's give it a score out of 10. For me, I'm going to give this a score of 7 out of 10, just because he's relatively unproven, but he has a lot of potential. The second player that we're going to speak about is Shea Ojo, another Liverpool loanee. If he's anything like Ryan Kent, then we are in for an absolute dime. I've got some mates that are Liverpool fans, and they've obviously seen a lot more of Ojo than I have, and some have actually said that he's better than Kent. That is yet to be saw. Similar careers up until the times at Rangers, to be honest, although Ojo probably thought of as a better player. Ojo obviously making eight Premier League appearances for Liverpool, a lot of them being sub-appearances, obviously. Ryan Kent went out in a number of loans, so has Ojo. Ojo has been at clubs like MK Dons, Wolves, Wigan, recently at Rems in France, and they've not really worked out for him. He's made 50 championship appearances, and he's 22 years old, so again, he's a player that's wanting to break into a first team. He's not going to be wanting to sit about. I mean, look at Kylian Mbappe. He's been running it since he's been 18, 17 years of age, and some of these players have hardly played first team football. So a player that like Ojo, I believe, is coming up here to play regularly. He's going to try and make the spot his and it's up to him whether he can do it or not. I've heard also that he's a very, very fast player. He's got a decent left foot on him. He knows where the target is. So again, it's a very exciting prospect. I'm going to score Ojo a solid 8 out of 10. Again, don't know too much about him, but where he's coming from, the plaudits he's already had, gives me a lot of promise for this signing. The third player that we are going to speak about is obviously a player that was at his last year on loan and we've now signed him on a free transfer and that is Stephen Davis. Davis started off his setting spell at Rangers not too well. I believe we were playing him a little bit wrong. We didn't put enough legs around him. The shape wasn't really complimenting him and he was so far off it fitness wise. He was coming up from Southampton and he hadn't kicked a ball. He hadn't kicked a ball in absolute months. So when he came up to Scotland, although he knew what to expect, we over 160 appearances for Rangers, over 20 goals, 55 assists. He knew what to expect, but his brain just couldn't do it. His brain just couldn't let his body do what it wanted to do. But once we put Glenn Kamara and Ryan Jack around him and we changed the shape, 
he showed his class and at 34 years of age, over 100 appearances for Northern Ireland, I think his experience will be vital next year. I think he'll be a very important squad player because I don't think he'll play Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. But I do think that he could be a starting player in the league games for Rangers. And for that reason, I'm going to score it a 9 out of 10. There's not a lot of promise from him going forward in terms of in five years' time. He's not going to be about, most likely. But for the current season coming forward, we know what to expect from Stephen Davis now. We've seen it at the end of last year just dictating games, using his mind. He's made over 300 appearances down in the Premier League. I mean, come on, he was Southampton's captain. He showed his class already, and hopefully he can show it again next year. The next player is another Northern Ireland international, not making as much appearances as the man Stevie Davis, but he's made a handful now, and that is Jordan Jones. He's a player that we know all too well, Rangers fans out there and any other Scottish fans out there that have watched the SPFL. He's tore Tav a new one most times he's played him, let's be honest, and that's his game. His stepovers are absolutely delightful, and again, if you've been watching the Rangers TV videos, those stepovers have just been taking players out of the game. Look at his performances recently for Northern Ireland. He put it on a plate for them to make history over in Estonia, and he's just a player that really excites me. He's 24 now, made over 90 appearances in the SPL, you know, but something that he may need to improve on is his goals. I think he's averaging around about a goal every 10 games right now. We're wanting to up those numbers, I believe. He's got 16 assists in the SPL, 11 goals. So obviously, we're wanting to get that up. I will also be giving him an 8 out of 10. We know what we can expect from him. Pace, power, hopefully more goals and more assists as well. The next one that I'm going to speak about is a player that's 29 years of age. He has been bounced about from club to club, now settling at Rangers, and that is Greg Stewart. He's a player that most people right now are overlooking. They're saying he's not good enough to be at Rangers, he's never shown it really in his career and stuff like that, and I don't blame them. His track record shows that he's hit and miss. Look at his performances at Aberdeen, not up to scratch. But if you do look at his performance in the first half of last season at Kilmarnock, he was outstanding, scored nine league goals. He was causing it. He was playing out in that right wing and he was just causing havoc. When he's confident, when he's got a manager that knows how to play him like Steve Clark did and that potentially Steven Gerrard can also do, then I think he shows a lot of promise. He's got a lot of experience in the league, playing for Dundee, Aberdeen, Kilmarnock. He's never played for a club like Rangers though. That's the only worry. Will he have what it takes when needed, when called upon to come into the starting eleven and provide moments of greatness? I don't know, yet to be providing. For that reason, I am going to be scoring him a 6 out of 10. The next signing is George Edmondson. Built like a brick house, the boy. He's coming in. He's looking to take either Katic's, is that a word? Or Goldsense's. Let's just keep up the trend at this point. He's looking to take their place. Do I think he'll get it? Potentially. We've already seen that Gerard has disrupted the partnership with putting Warrow in there before, taking Cat each out. Will they do the same with Edmondson? The two of them are a similar age. Me personally, I would like to see the Cat each and the Goldson partnership flourish. I would like to see the start of last season reciprocated again at the start of next season. But from what I've saw from Edmondson so far, which isn't a lot, not going to sit here and lie, I'm unsure. I don't know much about him. I've heard he was player of the year last year for Oldham in League 2 in England. Not a great standard, is it? But he's played a lot of football. Over 40 games last year, he played for Oldham. In total, he's actually played some games in League 1 as well. So again, it's a signing that comes in that we don't know too much about, but could be a diamond in the rough. It could be a player that comes in and shows us what he's all about. But obviously, it's early days. It's early days. I think he's coming in to be a third choice, maybe a fourth choice, but to push those boys to perform. So, for that reason, again, I am going to score this signing as... A 6 out of 10. The final signing needs no introduction. It's Joseph, Alawasi, Timitopi, Ayodele, Aribo. Oh man. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive for myself. So if you're just kicking about, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you don't mind as well. You know you have a good player when the other fans from the team are absolutely raging. I mean, the manager, Lee Bossack, has almost had a rage quit himself. But let's keep it 
on the football side of things. He's made over 80 appearances in League One in England. He scored 14 goals, 13 assists. And if you compare that to Jordan Jones, that's almost as much as him. And he's been playing at a deep line midfield position and sometimes attack midfield. I am hearing that his predominant position is a bit deeper in the midfield. Some people are comparing him to Yaya Touri in his style of play. I mean, if you look at the stature of him, it's very, very similar. From the highlights that I have saw, he's got an eye for a pass, he's got an eye for the goal, and he's just a very, very promising and powerful signing going forward. I believe that Joe Aribo could be the game changer, could be the missing part of the puzzle that Rangers were needing in their squad to give us that consistency that we were lacking. So the Aribo signing, I'm giving a 9 out of 10. We've seen players with bigger profiles that have came up to Scotland and not done well. Aribo, big profile right now. Coming up to Scotland, a lot of people speaking about him, saying that he can go to the very top. We'll just need to wait and see. And I hope that he does deliver for Rangers Football Club next year. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it and you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button with post notifications on. Hit the like button as well. I've been Sharp Div. I will see you in the next one. And I'm out. All my